Hey photographers, welcome back. This is your third week of exposure, fifth week of the course. You can see here's our three weeks of exposure right here. Uh, this week is shutter speed, which is, uh, in all honesty, quite a bit easier than aperture and even easier than uh, talking about light and things like that. Shutter speed, I think we can all kind of easily grasp. All right, so in uh, uh, shutter speed here, we've got a nice photograph uh, old, old photograph that is pretty historical and important. Basically, um, what happened was Edward Muybridge was commissioned to take photographs of horses. And uh, I think his name was Leland Stanford, the former governor of California and later uh, the Stanford, Stanford University was named after him. Um, he was in an argument or a, a bet of some sort at one point and the bet was that all four feet, do all four feet of a horse leave the ground when it's running? It's almost impossible to tell, probably is impossible to tell by just watching it, um, but they, the technology that came out of this sort of study in this bet was uh, helped, um, helped uh, shutter speeds in contemporary cameras, and you can see right here, it is in fact true, all four feet off the ground. So that's your famous photograph. Let's move on. We've got uh, a couple things going on. Here's your assignments for the week. Uh, do October 10th your photo critiques. You can see see here. Uh, and that's from last week's aperture photos from last week's exposure. Uh, yeah, October 10th. Friday you have your discussion due, and it's a letter to Tamron. Uh, it's worth six points. It's important to note that I'm changing some values of the discussions. Um, I I think that there's been, uh, uh, you guys have been doing great with the photo critiques, you guys have been doing great with your photos, pretty well with your uh, photo journals, but I think the discussions are falling short a little bit, in my opinion, um, so I'm, I'm bumping them up in value and hopefully that in turn uh, bumps up the amount of uh, reflection and, and uh, involvement. So we'll talk about that in a second. And your Sunday, here's four photos. Uh, since it's shutter speed, I'm going to dictate the shutter speed for you, the setting. And you have to do one tenth of a second shutter, a one second exposure, and a one light painting photograph, which could be anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds, or if you want to throw it on the bulb setting um, and have it open for as a really long time, that's up to you. Uh, and then your editing assignment is to add a texture to a photograph, which is quite a bit easier than last week's assignment. All right, so I wanted to talk about just one more time the exposure and the relationship between shutter speed and IS, uh, shutter speed and aperture. Um, so here's a little EV value chart, EV meaning exposure value, and uh, I just wanted to talk about this for a second. So let's take this value right here. It's 10 EV values. Now notice that when I uh, increase these uh, aperture values, which means decreasing the amount of light, uh, decreasing the di diameter of the of the hole they're given a value of one two three four five but when it actually happening is you're cutting the amount of light in half cutting the amount of light in half cutting the amount of light in half same thing here you're cutting the amount of light in half cutting the amount of light in half every single time so if I wanted to go from here to let's say here I would double the amount of light in terms of shutter speed Right, and I will uh, cut the uh, aperture, cut the diameter or the area of the hole in half. So that means double the amount of light entering, half the amount of light entering, which means I have the same EV value. And if you think about it more uh, visually in terms of like a histogram, which we've talked at length about, uh, you're basically going to get the same exposure, the same histogram. Um, even though your photograph will look slightly different, this will have a little bit deeper de depth of field than this one here, but still your histogram and your exposure will be pretty much identical. And just keep that in mind when you're, when we're, uh, when you're looking into that discussion. There's a, there's a reason why I'm talking about this. Uh, you're going to need this part. So just think about that. It's actually kind of smart. You know, everything is doubling and halving. And uh, it's the same with ISO. It always doubles or halves, which is, which is brilliant because if you wanted to give a little and take a little, uh, it's easy because everything is done in the same, in the same uh, units, doubles and halves. So let's talk about your discussion. 
Uh, here's a photograph I saw in an advertisement. This advertisement is for a Tamron lens 18 to 270 and its uh, aperture is 3.5 f3.5 to f6.3 and we'll talk about what that means in a second but what I think my theory is when I look at this photograph I think it's absolutely a lie there is no way that this lens took this photograph zoomed in maybe changed the settings shutter speed and aperture and then took this photograph and I want you to figure out why I think that it might sound like a difficult assignment but it's actually not too bad if you understand all the uh, the EV charts and, and how shutter speed and aperture actually work so here's some assumptions that I'm taking. It has to be some assumptions. First, the smaller photograph was taken, and then moments later, from the same location, so the photographer didn't move, and neither did the subjects, um, the second photograph was taken. So just as we see here, someone zoomed in and took a photograph. Second thing, the lens, uh, they used the lens in the advertisement, which is f3 to f6.3, f3.5 to x6.3. Let me tell you what that actually means. When they advertise that, what that means is that um, I'll look at the look at the lens. What that means is that when the the lens is zoomed out, which it is in this case right here, it's completely zoomed out. That the the largest possible um, aperture is f 3.5. So if I wanted to make that uh, the aperture as shallow as possible when it's all zoomed out this is as max as it could go if I wanted to zoom in so lengthen the focal length so the lens would look something like this sort of um, the maximum aperture is 6.5 or what was it 6.3 maybe can't remember now say right there yeah 6.3 sorry so 6.3 of course you can still have you know f22 f30 on both of these but the maximum aperture on on both of these settings so when it's all zoomed out it's this all zoomed in it's that so for this red one uh, we're looking at this this case right here and the the uh, zoomed out one the maximum aperture would be f3.5 okay so your task is to write a letter with your partner just one letter is fine uh, let's go through the rest of these but your job is to write a letter so the photograph photographer didn't use any neutral density filters um, if you don't know what a neutral density filter is it's not important uh, for this but uh, just so you know neutral density filters basically are what people use maybe for example to take uh, photographs of waterfalls or moving water uh, like rivers and what it does is it offsets these um, it offsets these EV values so if I have um, if I wanted to take a sh slower shutter speed maybe at like a one second uh, I can use throw in an EV or a, a neutral density filter and uh, instead of blowing it out it'll it'll sort of neutralize the uh, EV values basically it's a really dark filter so you can leave a shutter on longer during the day uh, and let's see here you do not need any of this text. If you can't read it, uh, you don't need it. All that you need is uh, this piece right here. And uh, assume the photographer didn't change the ISO. So like I said, took a picture, zoomed in, changed the shutter speed, changed the aperture, and took another photograph. Um, okay, to turn in, you and your partner are going to write a letter to, to whom it concerns at Tamron and the manufacturer of this lens. Your letter needs to illustrate why you know this advertisement is misleading you should also use appropriate terminology so all the terms and vocabulary that you've been learning and you might want to use some diagrams uh, hint hint something like this um, that sort of displays your point and uh, yeah email me your uh, your letter as an attachment if you want to send it to Tamron go right ahead I don't I don't mind but uh, uh, you don't have to send it to them send it to me here's your groups you can see there there's a group of three there and uh, as an icebreaker uh, because I know you guys don't know each other really well yet or at all uh, you guys have been talking sort of digitally on WordPress 
I'd like you to discuss what are three places that you would love to photograph in this world. Um, uh, there's tons on my list that I'm hoping to get to someday. Uh, what are some three and why? Uh, talk about that and throw that in the email. I'd like to hear where you guys are, what you guys talked about. So here's your photo for the uh, textures. Um, kind of a cool photo, just a couple minutes long. It's actually a really easy technique. So for those of you that found last week was a little hard, this one's quite a bit easier. And uh, just for fun, I thought uh, a before and after. Some blogs do a before and after on Photoshop, and I find it super helpful. So I took Maya Mickles photograph from last week of a, of a sunset. And uh, though it was already a pretty good photo, um, I decided to, uh, I, the, the quality was good enough in the WordPress blog for me to steal and, and uh, hope, you, hope you don't mind me, Maya, but uh, yeah, so hopefully you learned something from that. And uh, so let's talk about your assignment a little bit. So like I said, one blink, a blink of an eye takes a tenth of a second. So that's sort of our prompt for the week. A blink of an eye is a tenth of a second. So I want you to open up your, your blog post this week with a photograph with a one-tenth a second exposure. And then uh, let's do a couple more for fun. A one-second exposure. You're probably going to have to go at night for that. And then a, uh, and let's do some light painting as well. I think that would be really fun. Uh, I am really inexperienced light painter. Pretty much I've only done it once, and this is it. Uh, this was taken during the Olympics or the Olympic opening ceremony. Got These are just iPhones, five iPhones, 30-second exposure. Uh, not that hard. That was actually the first take. We think we took two or three, but this was the first one. Um, so yeah, it's pretty easy. Get your friends, have some fun with that. Uh, there's also another uh, video here. Some high school kid, it looks like, posted a how-to video on light painting. Gives you some good tips and some different kinds of lights that you can use. Flashlights and LED lights and little uh, keychain lights and stuff like that. So uh, take a look at that as well. That's your week. A um, couple things I wanted to say just beforehand, before I go. Why don't you go check your grades. They're almost updated. There's a few outstanding things I need to do, but go to assess and grades. If there's any concerns, you can email me. I've got grades for every single individual photo. However, those are not represented. These are averages. And uh, if you haven't read that uh, late work policy, some of your stuff has been late. Um, usually I've been writing a little comment um, on the grade if it's if it was late but uh, I think everyone's doing pretty well a lot of a lot of scores are over four out of six five out of six which I think are excellent so I'm happy with the photo so far uh, the next thing uh, just if you want um, let's see here if you go into your dashboard and you wanted to share your photos on Facebook uh, you can go into settings and sharing settings and sharing you can see Facebook here and it will automatically uh, send your post to Facebook and so people can see if, if you're curious if you want to share your stuff with with uh, with your friends um, that's a cool way to do it I, I signed up for it not too long ago um, it's a nice feature and that's about it have a great week um, hopefully the shutter speed and light painting are, are good for you and if you have any questions about these editing assignments or anything, please let me know. I can Skype. We can share screens. It's not really an excuse to not, not execute it very well. I would love to help you with Photoshop and uh, make, sure that, make sure you ask. You need to ask in order, in order to get these things done. Okay. Have a good week.